welcome to another video in this video we are going to take a look at the power supply that was going to charge the capacitor banks for the railgun in this particular episode I'm going to discuss several ways of driving MOSFETs and why it is necessary to do that in a good manner so first of all, what is a MOSFET? Well, it's simply just a transistor, but uh, a couple of hundred times more powerful than the ordinary BJT transistor. So if we have a normal transistor and we have a MOSFET, this is the symbol for a normal BJT and this is the MOSFET this is only capable of like 500 milliamps max while this MOSFET it can go up to something let's say 300 amps so you can see why this MOSFET is favored over a normal transistor but driving a MOSFET is also a lot harder and we will get into that now this is a normal bipolar junction transistor also a BJT it's used in a lot of simple circuits like driving LEDs or simply anything below the 500 milliamps they are very small and they are easy to use and this is a MOSFET as you can see it's a lot bigger it even has a metal casing but that's required because in the switching of something like this that can handle the amperes giving with the data sheet it will uh, heat up quite a lot so you need something like a heat sink to be attached to this metal part so the heat transfer is uh, accomplished pretty good with normal BJT's you don't have an option for something like that you can try but it won't be very successful and well there are a couple of different applications why you want to use a MOSFET or a BJT which uh, I simply put in like hobby applications very easy circuits and this is for logic driving high power transformations driving motors all that kind of stuff but with, with such advantages also come surprise and there are a couple of disadvantages of the MOSFET which I will handle right now so for first you must know what these pins are well, from left to right is the gate the drain and the source also this metal part is connected directly to the middle pin which is the drain and most of the heat will be going through the drain and then to the source so you, if you can easily dissipate that heat it will be much more effective 
here than if you attach it to the gate or something like that. But it's mainly the gate that's going to give you problems. There are a couple of properties to that gate which not a lot of people are familiar with. Most people who use MOSFETs simply have something like an uh, Arduino and they put a resistor and then they simply connect something like this they simply use the signal generator or something of a signal source from the Arduino or any other thing, 555 timer and they s drive the MOSFET directly well that, that, that will work for very low frequencies because if we take a look at the MOSFET If I draw the MOSFET right here, this is what you would see from a symbol, and this is sim what you would see as the easiest form of a MOSFET. But this is not all what there is to it, there also is a internal body diode mostly and then you think it's that you usually see this body diode in a data sheet but that's not all there also is a input output capacitance here which is usually the drain to source capacitance now, also that is, is not a problem at all. What is the problem is the capacitance here, these two capacitance. This is the G, D, gate to drain, and the capacitance from gate to source. What will happen if you do something like this with a very weak signal with, a l with little current it will take a lot of time to charge these capacitances and therefore you will fail at high frequency switching which is ideal for efficient DC to DC converters or something like that Now how do we drive these MOSFETs at very high frequencies? For that you need a MOSFET driver, which is the topic of this episode. Because we want efficient and very powerful power conversion in our railgun so we can fire repeatedly without having to wait for, the, for it to charge very long. For example, if you use a disposable camera, you would have to wait about 5 minutes before it's charged. With this research I'm doing and all that which you are waiting for, because you're probably thinking, where's that real gun? We want that real gun. Well, it's on the way, but it's uh, a lot more effort because if you would use a disposable camera or something cheap like that you would wait to five minutes but for this I expect something like five seconds which is a significant difference but the main reason why it's so hard is that these capacitances must be charged and if you would do something like this you would get the curve 
a charge curve like this. If this is the voltage, this is the time in seconds, and this is the voltage in volts. You would get a charge curve, something like that, and it knocks back down, and then continues. Or, in this case, because there is nothing else, it will be something like this. Which is even worse. This means that if there is a threshold voltage, something like this, it will, it will f re destroy your switching, which you do not want, because it can cause short circuits in your circuit and all kinds of bad things will happen. So what you want instead is a nice square wave signal like that. But in order to do that, there is not something like that. It's, this, is, this is an ideal representation, but if you zoom in close enough, you will see something like something like this. And the time it takes for this curve to get to the maximum voltage is called the rise time. Same for here. The time it takes is the fall time. Now you ideally want these two times to be as low as possible but if you might have guessed is that those capacitance or these capacitance have to be charged they can hold a certain charge before a maximum voltage is is achieved and that's the property of capacitors that they can't instantly change their voltage. Same as inductors, they can't instantly change their current. So, as I said, a gate driver has to be made. Such a gate driver will push a lot of current through this gate and almost instantly charge these capacitors. And how faster, how more, the, the more the current you deliver to the gate, the faster it will charge, and therefore, the lower your rise time will be. So this is the easiest and most basic MOSFET driver you can think of. This is ideally for low side and eventually also high side driving but it's very simple it just simply pushes the voltage through this NPN transistor into the gate and then when the signal turns off from this side if the signal here turns off if we put a PWM function right here signal turns off, this goes on and then it pulls the gate charge to ground and we will eventually add a high enough current, input current and a pull current we will create a square wave like this very easily but what is hard to do is a couple of things is that you will have problems with 
the driving of the transistors because also they need to be charged because they are simply just like MOSFETs they are transistors and transistors well they also have a little capacitance at their gate or their base in this case and also that has to be very fast in order to achieve the the, the speeds you want and that is being done with a couple of methods one of them is using isolated power supplies for each individual MOSFET and that's quite a good way because if you have them in a full bridge configuration or something like that you will make sure that they won't be shorted out if you have them in a 180 degree phase shift where the where the source or the emitter of a transistor then drives the gate or base of another transistor so that's a positive property of using these to DC converters which are isolated from each other now for high side switching which is very troublesome in my experience is that if you can see the, the gate needs to be at a certain reference voltage from the source for example if you use 12 volt input and you use 12 volt for the gate and you will turn on the MOSFET this here will be also 12 volts this will be 12 volts and your MOSFET won't work anymore it's it's, it's very troublesome and even so because here are some capacitors is that the the MOSFET they will float at a certain voltage and I will demonstrate that later and that must be properly drained or else the MOSFET will stay on partially and if the other MOSFET for example if you have another MOSFET right here down here and it is in a sort of DC converter configuration it will short circuit the the entire circuit for example in a full bridge or in a half bridge and the one in the high side MOSFET is floating you will eventually blow your circuit up which is not good so I'll show you a couple of examples with my own MOSFET driver which is simply a push-pull configuration and I'll show you what happens if what what happens if you don't use a pull-down resistor that's number one what the pull-down resistor does is that the floating capacitance here it will be discharged from here and if you just think the load there's no load anymore so it will just be straight pulled to ground via a resistor and then draw the resistor but I'll demonstrate that now <laughs> 